Now see the images and tell me the diagnosis. So here you can see there is prolapse of rectum. So this is rectal prolapse. If you see the first picture, in the first picture there is prolapse of only, only mucosa. So if there is prolapse of only mucosa, it is known as mucosal prolapse. And whenever there is prolapse of all the three layers, mucosa, submucosa, muscularis, when the whole thickness is coming out, this is known as full thickness prolapse. So second picture is of full thickness prolapse. Clear? First is only mucosa is being prolapsed. So this is mucosal prolapse. Now see, this mucosal prolapse is more common in children, whereas in adults, there is full thickness prolapse. Now see the anatomy. Now see, in certain patients, there is redundant rectum. Now see, this is anal canal and this is rectum. So whenever there is redundant rectum and there is weakness of pelvic floor muscles, what happens? First, this rectum goes inside the anal canal. Now can you see the movement? Anal canal, this is rectum, it goes inside. So before prolapse, what is this? You can see one loop is going into another or one part of bowel is going into another. This is intussusception. What kind of intussusception? This is internal intussusception. Clear? So see, there is internal intussusception. Okay? Now, whenever this rectum is going in anal canal and when you can visualize this coming out, this is known as prolapse. So this is rectal prolapse. How we can manage? It's very easy. So since this rectum is mobile and redundant, what you can do, you can fix it. So where you can fix it, posteriorly you can see there is sacrum posteriorly and anteriorly what there is rectum. So you can see this is the sacrum, this is the rectum. I'm using the mesh, can you see? And this mesh is sutured around this rectum and it is fixed to the sacrum, clear? So if it is fixed to the sacrum with the help of mesh, so I'm doing the fixation of rectum with the help of mesh this is known as rectopexy so in rectal prolapse i'm going to perform rectopexy this is one treatment if there is excessive length or extra length of rectum you excise the extra length and then you fix it if you excise and then you fix it this is known as resection rectopexy one second in certain patients whenever the patients who cannot tolerate this long duration surgery. So in those cases, can you see this is anal canal? So what we can go for? We can go for anal wiring. So we are going to narrow this anal canal with the help of. So if the patient is having some kind of disease who cannot tolerate the surgery, in those cases, we can go for anal wiring. So there is narrowing of anal canal and now this rectum will not go. So this is the basic treatment and the basic pathophysiology involved in rectal prolapse. So one by one we are going to discuss. First we are going to discuss the rectal prolapse in children and then in adults. So rectal prolapse in children. Rectal prolapse in children. And we discussed it is mucosal prolapse so this is the mucosal prolapse if you go to the rural area you will notice that at the time of defecation some of the patients are having this kind of presentation why these kids are suffering from protein energy malnutrition and when these patients are having protein energy malnutrition what is the problem they have habit of eating soil that is known as pica since they have habit of eating soil because of this what happens there is worm infestation and when these patients have worm infestation and because of eating the soil they have diarrhea so three factors protein energy malnutrition worm infestation and diarrhea in all these cases when the child is going for defecation doing straining there is prolapse of only mucosa good thing if you treat the underlying cause this condition resolves spontaneously so what are the risk factors or causes of rectal prolapse in children first protein energy malnutrition there is worm infestation worm infestation and diarrhea diarrhea okay now see certain patients have sacral agenesis so there is no support to the rectum and certain patients have myelomeningocele in these cases also there is rectal prolapse but these are rare causes so other causes are sacral agenesis and meningomyelocele meningomyelocele how we are going to manage in majority of cases what conservative management is sufficient 
so if it's because of protein energy malnutrition worm infestation diarrhea what treat the underlying cause so treat the underlying cause and most patients improve now imagine if still it persists even after treating the underlying cause it is going to persist in that case we have to go for rectopexy means fixation of rectum and what's the name of rectopexy we have to perform lockhart this is lockhart mummery rectopexy so this is known as lockhart mummery rectopexy okay now see these patients the patients who are having sacral agenesis or meningomyelocele here the prognosis is poor and patient cannot tolerate a long duration surgery so here we go for thiersch anal wiring so in these patients in children we go for thiersch anal wiring now see the rectal prolapse in adults we discussed that in adults it is full thickness it is the full thickness rectal prolapse okay so how we are going to treat the rectal prolapse in adults generally we go for rectopexy and there are two approaches one is abdominal and the second is perineal what is the advantage of this abdominal approach that here you can perform the extensive surgery and good fixation if there is extra length of rectum it can be resected so what if rectopexy is done by abdominal approach here the recurrence rate is lesser in comparison to perineal approach but what is the disadvantage since it's an extensive surgery here the morbidity is very high so suppose i have to select two patients one the patient is 40 years old and the second the patient who is more than 60 years old so the 40 years old patient in this patient i don't want recurrence that's why i will go for abdominal rectopexy and in the patient who is more than 60 or elderly patient in that i don't want any kind of morbidity so i will go for perineal approach so see in adults rectopexy can be performed by abdominal approach abdominal approach or it can perform by perineal approach clear in abdominal approach what is the advantage that it is having low recurrence rate but what is the disadvantage it's having high morbidity high morbidity in perineal approach there is high recurrence rate but advantage there is low morbidity clear and that's why abdominal approach is preferred in young patients and this one is preferred in elderly clear now how to remember there are named surgeries which are asked so the mnemonic is var here it's var w means wells a means this is abdominal r means ripstein so mnemonic is var wells abdominal ripstein and in perineal approach the mnemonic is pad pad clear so p means perineal a means altmeyers t means delorme so a it's altmeyers and d means it's delorme clear so pad war p perineal altmeyers delorme war wells abdominal ripstein these are the rectopexy then there is a surgery in which we perform the resection of rectum and then we perform the fixation that's known as resection rectopexy also known as goldberg frickman now these are the types of rectopexy there is another technique in which we perform the resection and then perform the fixation so that's known as resection rectopexy clear and what's the name of this surgery it's known as goldman freeberg so this is Goldman Freeberg rectopexy. Goldman Freeberg rectopexy. Clear? So these are the names which are asked frequently in the exam. They are asking Wells, Ripstein, Altmius, Delorme. We discussed here channel wiring. So you tell me 
Tears, anal wiring should be included in which one? Abdominal or perineal? So obviously, tears is also included where? In the perineal. So this is tears, anal wiring. Clear? So this is how we manage the rectal prolapse in adults. Thank you.